So we are now at a new and exciting moment. So I think you might have realized that we don't really think of you as, as the audience, you're all participants. So to uh, illustrate that, we're now going, going to go into one minute lightning talks. And don't be afraid, I, I think you all know that you have a lightning talk. So Gustavo Botan from Opt for America. Uh, Opt for America is a nonprofit organization that I've launched uh, last year and it connects foreign talent that it's already studying in the United States universities with American uh, located early stage startups. And we support the foreign talent during the one year that they get practical working experience through OPT and other types of visas. We help them understand the American culture, way of doing business. And then we also uh, connect with mentors that will support the startups. And this is a win-win situation for the foreign talent uh, to be uh, connected to the United States in mind and spirit. So when they go back home or they stay here, they will conduct more business and research with America. It's a win-win for the innovation and entrepreneurial sector because obviously talent is scarce, difficult to obtain, and sometimes expensive. So for early stage startups, this is a very valuable resource. So that is our, uh, our uh, mission, and we welcome, if any of you is interested in this, to uh, talk to me uh, at some point. Um, and that's, I guess, my minute. Thank you very much. Advanced Silicon Group is partnering with companies to commercialize our silicon nanowire technology. So we can make silicon nanowires with controllable diameter, density, um, taper, and length. So we have very good control over our, our wires. And we can do this very inexpensively. So we're partnering with people in a lot of different applications. Um, so some of the applications are thermoelectrics, non-wetting surfaces, hydrophobic surfaces, um, microfluidics, um, batteries, and solar. So in solar in particular, what we're able to do is to upgrade existing uh, cell lines, which are about $30 million. So we can upgrade them without any additional capital added um, and allow them to increase the efficiency of their cells, lower their processing costs, and double their margins. So we're looking for partners to, uh, to work together in different applications. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my company is Energy Compression, Inc. Uh, my team is Bernard Ho, a, uh, he's the CEO. He has uh, Intel uh, VC and startup experience. And my chief engineer is Charlie Kruger here, who I encourage you to talk to. Uh, our technology is uh, takeoff on compressed air energy storage. It's very different from the other kinds that are out there today. Uh, we use only low pressure. And uh, we do that, nevertheless, getting an acceptable energy density by uh, absorbing the air in a porous solid, uh, which soaks it up somewhat like a sponge and allows us to get a storage density equivalent to 100 atmospheres using only 10. It also makes the system incredibly safe because the air cannot come out explosively and you can shoot the tank full of holes with a machine gun if you so desired uh, without danger. Uh, finally, it makes it a snap to get efficient compression and expansion with off-the-shelf te compressor technology. And uh, the system overall is incredibly durable. We expect it to last about a century with daily cycling you only need to replace the compressor components every 10 to 20 years. So that's our company, and thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Ron. I'm Adam Paxson. I've spent the last 10 years here at MIT learning how to make things, energy in particular. And I'm working with the rest of the team at Dropwise Technologies to develop a coating material and, more importantly, a manufacturing process that takes this integral piece of heat exchange equipment that shows up everywhere in power plants and desalination plants refrigerators, and boosting its performance by more than 30%. And I think that uh, for a hardware startup, you really can't afford to wait to design in manufacturability to your product and fight against the existing infrastructure. For example, we're trying to coat this piece of equipment that fills up most of this room, but we realized that the piece of equipment is designed to take a vapor and control its temperature and pressure. And so we're using exactly that. We're taking this manufacturing process that introduces the coating as a vapor and playing with the pressure and temperature to deposit it inside this piece of existing infrastructure to keep the manufacturing cost as low as possible, which is key for wide-scale adoption. Hi, I'm Eric Grunebaum, as stated. Um, uh, partners are uh, Bob Shatton, who is a veteran uh, renewable and fossil energy developer 
and Professor John Brisson here at MIT uh, in the Mechanical Engineering Department. <clears throat> what we do is industrial ecology. Uh, what do da big data centers need? They need cooling and they need power. And what do LNG vaporization terminals need, like over here in district gas, I'm pointing to Everett there. Um, they need heat. So what we do is we combine the two things, uh, two industries, with a refrigerant loop. We take the heat from the data center and we use it to vaporize LNG. We take the cold return and we cool the data center. And you can add one other step. The refrigerant goes through a phase change. Uh, you can drive a turbine with that. You can generate clean electricity. So what you have is basically low-cost cooling and low-cost electricity with no emissions for the data center. And you have a free source of heat for the LNG terminal. Uh, and that's basically what it is. It's pretty simple. It uses commercially available uh, uh, equipment that's been tested. Uh, we have a method patent, and uh, we're commercializing it with, uh, we have a lot of LNG terminals that are interested uh, in using their waste refrigeration and getting a free source of heat. And we have data centers that are interested in potentially building near LNG terminals. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Josh Adler. I'm the founding CEO of SourceWater, sourcewater.com. I was a Sloan Fellow here a couple of years ago where I was in the Energy Ventures program and got very interested in unconventional energy production or uh, hydraulic fracturing as it's sometimes called. And as most people in this room probably know by now, uh, unconventional production uses a lot of water, about uh, over 100 billion gallons a year in the U.S. And what's even more interesting, it generates far more water than it uses, actually over 1 trillion gallons in the U.S. And the biggest problems in the unconventional energy process are uh, finding water and then figuring out what to do with the wastewater. But in fact, these two problems are each other's solution because there's virtually no technical challenge at this point to reusing the wastewater in new wells in place of fresh water. The problem is an information problem, which is finding what has always been treated as a waste product rather than as an asset. Uh, so that it can be used efficiently in the new wells, thereby solving both problems at once, and also solving the third biggest problem of hydraulic fracturing, which is the cost of moving the water around. So today, uh, we've been developing the software for about a year. We have pilot trials in Appalachia starting next week, and the low oil price has been great for us because it motivates these companies to try to reduce their operating cost and try new technologies to do that. Thank you. Hi, Tibor Tote from uh, Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. I actually uh, know a lot of folks here already. Um, we are a, uh, a quasi-public agency here in Boston that is uh, supporting the clean energy sector uh, broadly across innovation and deployment and installation of, of uh, technology, really trying to encourage and support the creation and development of new technologies and companies, the, the growth and, and creation of jobs uh, in these companies, and ultimately the deployment of broad, you know, broad solutions across the value chain from uh, renewable energies to uh, energy efficiency and, and demand side management and infrastructure technologies like storage and advanced materials. Uh, Professor Sarma was uh, actually uh, uh, unwittingly was uh, great at uh, providing some case studies of some of the companies that we work with already through some of our programs like uh, Dropwise and Tesselar who have benefited from our Catalyst program. Uh, Keystone did an Innovate Mass project with us, and, and part of uh, our investment program, we invested in ESES that you saw a lot of slides about. And, and so I'm actually the Managing Director of Investments for Mass CEC. Uh, I run an investments program along with a couple of my colleagues who are in the room, Allison Ernst and Sven Carlson. So feel free to, to grab us. We provide both uh, grants at early stages in the form of uh, $40,000 grants through a program called Catalyst. And we have one pagers on the front table on that. We also provide cost share for RPE recipients through a program we call Amplify Mass. We also have one pagers on the front table for that. And then at uh, uh, Series A and later stages, we uh, provide direct equity investments. Uh, and again, ESES is an example of uh, uh, direct investment we've made. And we also provide growth loans at, at commercial stages uh, in companies. So I guess that's my two minutes. That is. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bal Mukund. I'm from Agira. And three years ago, we started our journey uh, by asking ourselves a question. Uh, how can we manage light better in a solar panel and in the process make the solar panel cheaper? And that three-year journey has taken us through multiple applications that can be possible. And the invention, basic invention is that we can trap light that's falling on a sheet of glass within the glass and redirect it to the edges. 
And we can also do is we can leak light out of that uh, waveguide, but only at very specific collimated angles. So, so the, the light trapping optics can be used to uh, trap light and uh, accumulate it and concentrate it by 10 to 20x, and so you need that, many, that much lesser amount of solar cells without having to worry about the heat or tracking or other issues. And so it'll be a plug-in into the existing silicon solar panel infrastructure, but it'll bring benefits of cost, you can afford to use more efficient cells, and your capital expenditure will go down because this optics is just injection-molded polymers on glass. The other benefit, uh, the other application is that you can use the same light guide to make energy-efficient lighting where you can have sheets of uh, light and uh, LEDs on the edge, same as your displays, but light goes down collimated as a collimated beam, and the same thing can also go on your uh, cell phone displays where uh, you know collimated light comes to your eyes only, so it's private and brighter, so you save more battery for yourself. All right. Thank That's you. it. Uh, thanks, John. Um, so my, my name is Marco, I'm with the Solar, um, and um, our job for the past couple of years has been to reinvent the way uh, crystalline silicon modules, solar modules are made, and we sort of flip the manufacturing uh, process uh, uh, upside down. Instead of soldering cells and then laminating a big slab of glass, we make electronic components out of individual PV cells and then we plug them into a substrate. The same way you would make an electronic circuit board. Uh, with benefits accruing to uh, manufacturing bill of material, uh, manufacturing capital equipment, and downstream users. Very happy to elaborate during the coffee break if, you, if you'd like to know more. Thanks. Stan Fung here with Fossa Ventures. I'm a Salon graph from 25 years ago. I was involved in launching the first 10K business plan contest. Uh, 25 years ago. It is point in my mind Thanks. the last couple of years that it turns out the MIT graduates could graduate after they, uh, they left MIT, start to form business five years, 10 years into the life cycle. We have no source to get venture capital from angel investors. So we are launching a MIT graduate alum uh, VC group. We have two presentations already in the last three months. So, MIT, so I actually went to two CEOs, MIT grads, go looking for venture capital. So this is the connection. So if you want to uh, talk more, just find me.